Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. I'm a screw up. I can't do five things at once. I am not a multitasker. Now I can walk and chew bubble gum, but that's as far as it goes. In what we had tried to shoot for an episode that you're seeing now, our Monday 11 o'clock every other week episode, that's our shooting schedule and then we throw bonus episodes in sometimes, is what you're getting and we already have some footage shot because we're working on a 2420, we're doing a valve job on it. Well, I was going to explain the evolution of the 242 to the 2420 to the 2475. Basically your industrial 5 horse Ingersoll compressors from 1950 something through modern day. And I was going to show you the little differences as we went. Well, I started in the first five minutes, and then we're working on a valve plate, and then I talked a little bit more, and it turned into this mess. I'm not giving you guys a mess. Today, we're going to explain the differences and show some of the differences in the 242s to the 2420s to the 2475s. They're very simple. The biggest change came from the 242 to the 2420. The 242 had a flat head and a flat valve plate. This has a flat valve plate, but the head is very bulgy. Is bulgy a word? Anyway, the head's not flat. Um, the fingers in the 242 were replaced with these kind of valve parts. And the other big difference from the 242 to the 2420, aside from the change in the valves and the change in the valve cover, uh, was this is a 2420, and if you have a 242, you'll notice there is no unloader valve here. What they did when they went to the 2420 with the head redesign, they eliminated this, I'm sure to cut cost, but it was also a trouble spot for this unloader valve and the governor weights sometimes failing. And they decided to unload to this T right here, and at that T they run the unloader from here to a pressure switch which would have been right about here on the compressor between the motor and the pump and they used an unloader type pressure switch and when they unloaded it it un only unloaded the intercooler but it didn't unload the pressure that was between the high pressure discharge valve and the tank and I think on some of these they didn't even put a check valve in because it actually stopped the air here. So the compressor would actually start harder than the old 242s. And so that was one thing they changed. Now, the 2420 only lasted a few years and they moved it up to the 2475. The differences from the 2420 to the 2475 was they went only with the safety valve to protect the intercooler here and they uh, unloaded the hold machine from the check valve to the pressure switch. So they unloaded the machine from the discharge on the compressor down to the check valve and if, when you unload this side of it, you unload this side of it. So on the 2475, they unloaded it at the check valve to the pressure switch. On this one, they only unloaded the low pressure side to the pressure switch. So the new ones actually start easier than this one. And the old ones started easier than this one. 
I am not sure what all other differences there are. I'm not sure if it, this takes a different ring set. I didn't go looking at part numbers, but one thing I did find out was it, that in the uh, valve plate hardware, the high pressure valve plate is the same valve plate they're using in the 2475 now. On the 2420 and the 2475, they're using the same high pressure valve plate. When we tore this apart, this was OEM. This is 20 years old or maybe older, and it had never been apart. And it did not have the extra piece of hardware that's shown on the screen right now on the exhaust or discharge side of the valves. What you have is more hardware in the heads to make the valves work better on the 2475 the 2475 also was electrically unloaded clear to the check valve instead of just the inner core. And these are your basic differences, but Ingersoll fortunately didn't stick with the 2420 for very long. They went with this basic upgrade, but refined it for your 2475 that you use today. The 242, going back 50, 60, 80 years, however long it's been since they've been making the 242, but the 242 was rated 3 to 5 horsepower. And I just literally was on the phone with a gentleman in New Jersey today where he's got an old machine. It's a 242 set up with a 3 horsepower motor. And it works fine. It just runs 40% slower than the 5 horse. They can do that. One of the things I don't like about what Ingersoll has done with the 2475 over the 2420, and I'm going to include a couple other models. The 2340 uh, is the upgrade from the 234. Some of the things they did with uh, our modern generations is they now run them at a much higher RPM. I am not a fan of running a compressor at 14 or 1500 RPM when it was originally designed to run 900 RPM. This machine runs 900 or maybe almost a thousand RPM is its normal operating speed. Today, if you go to one of the big box stores or an Ingersoll dealer, they may try to sell you a seven and a half horsepower on a 2475. I recommend you, that you do not buy it. The 2475 is a great pump, but only run it with your five horse. Your five horse runs uh, the machine at a slower RPM and you'll get a better compressor life and you'll definitely get a better motor life with a five horse than you will with a seven and a half. So your generations of compressors uh, go 242, 2420, and 2475. And we've explained the differences here. We get a lot of calls about 242s because there's a lot of them out there. They're a great old machine. They run forever. They occasionally need rebuilt. They occasionally need parts. But you don't have to go to IR to get good parts. We have high quality aftermarket parts available. You can contact me through The Compressor Guru and we'd love to take care of you. Uh, we can ship anywhere in the contiguous 48 with great ease. We can ship elsewhere, but we found out shipping international gets very expensive. But if you're in a lower 48, we'd love to talk to you. Um, just wanted to explain to you some of the differences from why this 5 horsepower is different from the 5 horsepower that you may have bought 40 years ago or the 5 horsepower that you may have bought last week. They're all generations of the same family machine. Thank you for checking out today's episode of The Compressor Guru. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. 
Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.